Bonjour, Kinamagi NNA Ireland Adishnikas, and welcome to this production of the My Math Network. Today's episode, Chapter 8, Lesson 7, Using Models to Write Fractions as Decimals. by looking at our last session's assignment where we were going to compare fractions. And one of the key parts of comparing fractions is that we need to find common denominators. I can't compare easily five, four fifths and five sixths, but if I turn them into a fraction with a denominator of, let's say, 30, now it's a pretty easy visual, 25 thirtieths, 24 thirtieths. Makes it per much, much easier to do. What you usually are going to do to make this work is find the lowest common multiple or least common multiple of the denominators and then make equivalent fractions with that denominator and then do your comparison. And you could check if you have the fraction tiles around to see if it works. So as we looked at the assignment, this the least common multiple of four and eight is eight. So this becomes six eighths, which is less than seven eighths. Least common multiple of three and nine is, well, nine. So this becomes three ninths, which is equal to three ninths. Least common multiple is 12 on this one. So it would be nine twelfths is greater than eight twelfths. Problem solving, comparing seven fifteenths and two fifths, which is really six fifteenths, uh, baseball was liked less. And you can start seeing the comparison with the three sandwiches, Leroy one, uh, replace each blank with a number to make a true statement. So I needed to see something greater than six over 24. So seven works here and 20 works over there, but there are a lot of possible answers there, and I'll look at those closely. The vocabulary, and the vocabulary always usually comes from the first page of the lesson. The least common denominator is the least common multiple of the denominators of the fractions. And test practice, we found that Emil has a greater fraction of country music than Imani. <clears throat> Let's take a look at what today's assignment will look like. We're going to, we get to see our friend the model and always remember to look at the helpful hint and that helpful hint is multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same number is the same as multiplying the fraction by one. The result is an equivalent fraction and that's nothing new. Um, based on previous lessons that's why we have this little this shaped out to look like a one because five fifths is a whole it's a one. So while seven twentieths. I changed to 35 hundredths, the value didn't change. When we do the assignment, you're gonna shade the model and you're gonna write it as a decimal. And we'll talk about that, how to do that in just a little bit. But think back to shading it in and then think back to when we were doing decimals, I'll give you a hint. And then you have a few story problems and then you're gonna identify the decimal that represents the shaded portion. <clears throat> the essential question in chapter eight is how are factors and multiples helpful in solving problems? We're gonna begin in your book. Uh, if you do not have page 589 in the lessons packet around you, you should go grab that now and be um, ready for the lesson. That may require you to pause the video. Remember the expectation is that you should fill this in as we go, even if you're at home. That'll give you an artifact that you can use later on when compare when we do the assignment or when you're studying for an assessment. So the draw it says use a model to write one half as a decimal. And the hint here, and it starts with number one, write one half as an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 10. 
I'm going to give you a little hint. We want our denominators in this lesson to be a power of 10. We want it to either be 10 or 100 or 1,000. That will make it easy for you to do. You may already be able to look at one half and say, well, yeah, I know what that is. It's 0.5. And that's awesome. But we still do have to do the steps. So step one says write one half as an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 10. Let's get my annotation tool here and change the color. So I look at what's my first power of 10 that two will go into and that is 10 and two goes into 10 five times. So we have to mul multiply numerator and denominator by five. Remember, you can't multiply numerator and denominator by different digits and have them still be equivalent fractions. So two times five is 10. And now one times five is, so here's step one. We have now have a fraction with a denominator of 10. Make sure you've written that in. And then we'll move to her to step two. As is always the case when I say clear the video in these presentations or that I'm gonna clear the video, that usually buys you about one or two seconds to pause the video if you need more time. And I'm gonna go ahead and clear the video now. Right, one half is a decimal. So let's get our tool back out here. We're gonna shade a model of five tenths using the grid. And you may notice something, <coughs> pardon me, a helpful hint first, multiplying one half by five, five, five over five is the same as multiplying one half by one. The result is an equivalent fraction. So when we look at the tenths, how many columns do we have here? Beige, niche, this way, ni win, not in the good west way, niche west way, niche west way, junk way, madas way. So we have 10. Notice that is your denominator. How many of these do you think you should color in? Yeah, that's right, your numerator. Beige, niche, this way, ni win, and non in. There we go. So how many tenths are shaded? Your numerator. This model shows five tenths, or if we're saying it as a decimal, it would be 0 0.5. So there's no whole ones. Decimal point because we're under, we're into a part of a whole and there were five columns, and that's no different than what we did a little earlier in really in this quarter. So one half is equal to 0 0.5. And you notice that the one half and the five tenths, they visually look alike minus the color difference in my impeccable art skills. Yeah, I rolled my eyes too. Uh, but that does it show you that one half can be turned into a fr fraction with a denominator of a power of 10. And then that will be used to figure out the decimal. Fractions and decimals are related. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this. If you give it, well, I'll give you a few more seconds to write this in. And now I'm gonna go ahead and clear the drawings. You see the answer key. Let's try another one. <clears throat> Use a model to write, this is on the top of page 590, just for the record. Step one is up to, 
It says write three quarters as a decimal. Now, four doesn't go into 10 evenly, but it will go into 100. And if you think, well, how many times does it go in? Well, if you have four quarters, makes a dollar. How much is a quarter worth? 25 cents, right? So we're going to multiply the denominator, which is the bottom, and the numerator, which is the top, by 25. So four times 25 is 100. Three, toy, three times 25 is 75. So now I have three fourths as a fraction with a denominator of 100. And I want you to kind of visualize what this chart looked like, because we're going to end up having to shade in the equivalent amount of space. Although I probably wouldn't sh shade it quite like that where I'd have to count all of these, but you could. Go make sure you have 75 over 100 written in. And I'm going to go ahead and clear the drawings. So I need to shade a model of 75 over 100. How many squares out of the 100 are shaded? Here's your 100, which is a 10 by 10 grid. How many, how many squares do you think we need to shade in? If you took your numerator, you're correct. I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little easier. So let's do this. We have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. I'm gonna make this a little nicer and more aesthetically pleasing, at least as best as I can with my art skills. And now I also have to color in five more squares because that's seven tenths, which is 70. So one, two, three, four, five. The model shows 75 hundredths or because there's no full one, it starts with a zero decimal point, 75. So three quarters equals 0.75, which makes sense because if you had three quarters of a dollar, you had 75 cents. And that's how you would write 75 cents. So your basic steps today are going to be convert, find an equivalent fraction that has a denominator, which is a power of 10. And most of them today should be tens and hundreds. I can't imagine them trying to go to 10 thousandths just to mess with you. Then this really becomes your decimal. If you notice before it was 0.5, this is 0.75. And these zeros will eventually tell you how many digits are after the decimal point, just like we did earlier this year. So I put the 75, move back to, and there you go. But you can also visualize today, and today you are expected to use the, you know, to use models. They've provided them at least in the practice it and part of the assignment. So whenever you can do the practice once you should. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the drawing. Let's talk about it. In the first activity, how would it change if one half was written as a fraction with a denominator of 100? Would the results be the same? Close. It would end up being 50 over 100, which is 0.50. But we know that 0.5 and 0.50 are equivalent. So the result would be roughly the same, but the naming might be slightly different. Do three fifths and six tenths represent equivalent numbers? Well, let's figure it out. 0.6 represents six tenths. Five goes into 10 twice, so three times two is six. 
So six tenths and 0 0.6 are equivalent numbers. One is written as a fraction, one is written as a decimal. All right, time for you to practice a few. I'd like you to do numbers three and four. And when doing these problems, you should pause the video, solve it, and then we will return to go over them. So you may pause the video now. Welcome back. Let's do some math. 24, or sorry, four will not go into 10, but we know it'll go into 100. So four times 25 is 100. So what's one times 25? If you said 25, you're correct. Now I'm gonna have to shade in 25. 10, 20. My art skills are really sketchy this morning. One, two, three, four, and five. There's my thing there. And now I do need to write this as a decimal, oops, which equals 0 0.25. Is it possible to do it without the drawing? Sure. I could skip that step and say, okay, 25, and there needs to be two digits after the decimal point. So I'd move it in one and two and get 0 0.25. How about over 100? Again, because 20 will go into 100. How many times? If you said five, you're right. And three times five is 15. Before I shade it in. So I can write the whole number 15. And then there are two zeros. So I go back one, two, and I have 0.15 or 0 0.15. I can go ahead and draw, color it in. And that's 0.15. So yay. I'm gonna go ahead and clear those drawings. Let's do two more. And there's your answer key. Two fifths and three fifths. Go ahead, pause the video and unpause the video when you're ready to check your answers. Welcome back, let's see how you did. Well, this became four tenths which is 0.4. This became 6 tenths, which is 0.6. At this point, I'm going to send you off to the assignment. And remember, you should shade these in. If you're doing the Google form, shade it in on the paper and then type in your answer as a decimal. If you're doing Google form, you, you will need to draw models on your own. Uh, Art skills will not be evaluated, but it does tell you to draw models. So good luck on that part. Um, the ways you could submit the assignment is you could do it right here on the paper and turn it in. You could do the Google form and hit submit, or you could take, put your name on it, take um, a picture or scan of either of both sides and then text or email them to me. If you have any questions, please reach out to me at MIRLIN at sidechipschool.net. And I look forward to seeing you in class. Have a minute, Gishigat, Minwa, Baba P.